it's good to still see Jesse here at the final table. He's, he's really one of the good guys in poker, a really nice guy. His fiance Sheena is watching. Robbie with the king jack on the button. Robbie flops top pair on king seven three. From what we've seen before, I think you can count on at least one bet from Taylor if he follows through here. Now this board texture is a little bit different than the it seven is. seven ten. I, I would be more likely to to fold on this board texture than the seven seven ten, and I in fact would have folded, especially given Robbie's relentless aggression moving forward. There are no turns that I'm really happy about calling on, other than an ace, obviously. Maybe he thinks the heroic call down earlier will deter Ravi from uh, bluffing him so frequently. Or perhaps thinking that Ravi just came off of losing a sizable yeah. pot, he's less likely, but... You think it's cold in there, Tony? I think it is. It's a little cool in here. I'm sure they're very cold over there. Robbie with his red jacket all the way up. Really making him look even more like Super Mario over there. Jesse Rockowitz, the only player without a hoodie. The remaining three players at this final table. on the button here with queen seven. That's something we haven't what? seen from Jesse. Well, I don't think he's going to get to a flop here because Taylor is going to about to make it 200,000. Only 160. He might he might call for 160. This is not a hand that Robbie is going to want to fold. I don't believe. <laughs> it doesn't communicate a lot of strength. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. a little, little surprising. Uh, I was hoping he wouldn't call after that uh, dance with his cards. <laughs> Jesse lets it go, so the king queen suited is good. Do you think now? Do you think this is an adjustment from Jesse, or do you think it had to do specifically with his hand? I'm guessing it's an adjustment because he's like, all right, well, it's a combination of the two. It's an adjustment, and it's a I have a middle strength hand. Ravi hates to fold. I'll just limp and see what happens, and maybe I can just win some easy small ball pots. It's see, the problem with that though is you're going to get in so many fewer heads up pots yeah. with Ravi. You're going to have Taylor completing the small blind so frequently. Correct. So I, I think I would have preferred a raise. Whew. Taylor here with Jack Knight of Clubs. Ravi 
I'll be making a very loose call here out of the small blind with 9-7. Seems like kind of a boredom call. Robbie seems not to care if his cards are suited. That is true. That's something that I'm piecing together here about Robbie's game. We have a board that really doesn't hit anybody and Jesse may, may hit Jesse the best with a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. Robbie going to lead out here in the least credible bet we've seen thus far at the final table. Ravi leading out into two players with 9-7 on an ace-five deuce board. This is similar to his lead with 9-5. With mm -hmm. Do you remember like what that four, board four, was? Three or something? Yes. It's similar to that. And give Taylor credit for for calling here. I mean, at this point, Taylor just does not believe these leads. And he's just going to turn a jack and make his life nice and easy. But, I mean, to make that call there, that, you know, he's leading into two players. Yeah. He, I would believe that he wouldn't do that without a pair. I mean, without some t Like, on the on the 4-3 four, four, board, it was a heads-up pot. <laughs> Both players check the jack turn. And a three on the river. You're all surprised that he didn't try and bet there with his jack? On the river return? On the river. I don't no. really. No. I'm not, especially because Ravi is capable of check raise bluffing. Although we haven't seen him do that on the river, but we have seen him do that with hands that have zero equity, which is essentially the same thing as doing it on the river. But give give uh, give Taylor credit for the flop float. That's probably something I wouldn't have done. Of course, he was getting a pretty good price. Mm -hmm. um, Ravi did not use his normal eighty percent pot bet size. He did have a backdoor flush draw. Taylor did that last hand as well. Jesse would call on the small blind. Taylor checks jack four. Peel here with the jack high flush draw. Jesse with second pair, and he's going to turn a jack. Are you surprised that Jesse limped pre instead of raising? No, he uh, so far in the small blind seems to be very content to just like complete against uh, good players, keep pot small out of position. One 
I'm surprised by this turn bet. Does seem a little thin, doesn't it? I mean, it is a situation where when you check almost any amount your opponent bets, you're going to have to there fold to, so... Interesting little raise here by Taylor. It's one of those kind of get the showdown raises. Right, I like this. Gains extra money for his hand. And I can't imagine Jesse's going to be able to do anything here but fold. Let it go. Well, there you see, still any man's game here. We're playing 30,000, 60,000 with a 10K ante. Taylor barely out in front of Robbie. Jesse, not that far off at 3 million. So Taylor completes with the king four. Robbie checks. Both players whiff this ace queen nine flop. Check, check again. And a deuce on the river is going to give this pot to Ravi. Gotcha. <laughs> and with that small pot, we have a new chip leader. Now things slowing down at this final table a little bit. These guys are throwing uh, jabs and not haymakers for the moment. Exactly. Robbie is the oldest remaining player of the three at this final table. Mm -hmm. I want to remind you guys about the $2.2 million prize pool Fantasy Golf Millionaire Maker on April 9th at our sponsor, DraftKings. It's a $20 buy and your chance to win a million dollars in a golf tournament. That thing needs almost 126,000 players to fill up, and I don't think it's going to get there. So we should see some overlay on there, and you can even satellite in for as little as 25 cents. Make sure to check that out if you're a golf fan or just like to have a little money on the line when you're uh, hanging out on the weekend watching the tournament with friends and family. And, of course, big tournament starting tomorrow for March Madness. 150 k guarantee with a $20 buy-in on it, and there's going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars in prizes over the next couple of weeks all on college basketball. And, uh, of course, I got my teams in the mix tonight for the NBA, and they are, uh, they're doing all right so far. Got a bunch of these Detroit Pistons players who are playing against Philly. They're down in that game, but they're having pretty good performances, so we'll see how that works out for us. Good to see my 76ers up by more than 10 points at the moment. What would you think of their trade at the deadline? They got rid of Michael Carter-Williams. 
Yeah, I think I think it's a it's an interesting thing. I mean, they they certainly are trying to switch things up, and they're they're looking forward to to future years. It's it's been disappointing since three seasons ago. The Sixers made a somewhat deep run in the, in the playoffs, and then since then, the past couple of years, to be a Sixers fan just have, hasn't yeah, been the most. Yeah, they basically just blew up the team and set the reset button. Now, exactly. they've gotten some really high draft picks, uh, and it looks like Nerlens Noel is going to turn out really well. We'll see about Joel Embiid next season, and they're going to have a whole bunch of picks in this upcoming draft. Uh, but right now, you know, you've got, you've got a team that is making sure that they lose and get high draft picks. What's really interesting right now in, in Philadelphia sports is what's happening with the Eagles since... Uh, really interesting right now, isn't it? Since Chip has taken over the, you know, the decisions there as the GM, it's it's been pretty interesting. A lot of... No team has made more moves in the offseason than your Eagles. Exactly. What do you what do you think and feel about the moves they've made so far? You know, obviously it is a popular opinion that the Foles Bradford uh, uh, trade was oh. not in the best interest of the Eagles. Yeah, you guys gave up Foles and a draft pick for a guy who's never completed a season, right? Correct, correct. And uh, very weird. I do think. Listen, if you look back at Bradford's uh, how he did in college, mm-hmm. you know he was a fantastic player. But of course, what what you need to be worried about is the injuries. You know, when you've had two surgeries on your ACL, that's a pretty big deal. That's serious, yeah. Uh, so you you need to look at that going forward. I do think that that Nick Foles could certainly regress as a quarterback. I, I but he has he has been fantastic with the Eagles since Chip has come to town. So that was very surprising. Something else that is surprising is we now have three running backs you do between, have three running between backs. Matthews, Sproles, and um, Demarco Murray. Yeah, I uh, I liked the trade for um, Kiko Alonso and uh, and getting rid of I'm blanking, Shady McCoy. Um, I thought that was fine. Shady McCoy looked like he was regressing a little bit. It seemed like they were going to have to give him a big payday that they didn't want to give him. Uh, you pick up a probably good defensive player, assuming he comes back from his injury well, uh, and obviously he has a relationship with Chip Kelly from the Oregon history. But uh, that Nick Foles trade uh, for Sam Bradford is a really weird one. And to give up a draft pick to make it happen. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's the part that's, that seems a little... I mean, just foals for Bradford as a trade is suspect because you can't be sure that Bradford's even going to get through a season. And, you know, Foles, although he wasn't quite what you wanted from a starter last season, obviously what he did the previous year was very impressive. I would never expect him to keep up that type of pace. Right. But he's never looked that bad. I, I don't know. I guess Chip Kelly really felt like Foles is not the guy who can run the offense that I intend to run. Right. That's the other thing is you really don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Mm. You really don't know how well Nick Foles has is has embraced you know Chip Kelly Chip Kelly's type of offense. How yeah. well he is able to be the leader of the team. Those are kind of those intangible things oftentimes that really make a quarterback great. Um, obviously, nobody knew how great of a quarterback Tom Brady was going to be, but he works in that system. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that perhaps Chip Kelly is, is looking for. Yeah, I like that you guys got to Marco Murray. It really seems like uh, they're shaping up to be an inside running team. And yeah. They were an outside running team for quite a while. How about um, your Packers? Are they going to look better or worse? Well, right now, they, they re-signed who they needed to re-sign, which was uh, Balaga, the offensive lineman, and, um, and uh, oh, Robbie just flopped a flush here. I mean, Jesse doesn't have anything that can give him any action. And Randall Cobb, and they re-signed Randall Cobb, and uh, both those guys took a little less money than they could have got on the open market to stick with the Packers, and uh, historically, the Packers are really good at keeping the guys that they draft and develop, uh, and they seem to... They seem to do a nice job of choosing players whose priority is football and whose you know second priority is money. I mean, don't get me wrong; every major player in his prime wants to get paid. But you know, when you get guys to take ten or twenty percent discounts on the market, it speaks volumes about your program and what sure. they what they are sticking around for. So, I think the Packers are in real good shape right now. Uh, not much has changed in the roster. Um, I believe we lost a cornerback, Tremont Williams. Uh, which which hurts, you know. We uh, spent the last couple of years trying to fix that secondary, and it seemed like we finally got where we needed to be um, after we drafted Clinton Dix, and um, disastrous play in the Seattle game 
uh, notwithstanding. But either way, I think in the draft we're looking at probably linebackers. Uh, we've moved on from A.J. Hawk and maybe a corner. I don't think we're going to touch anybody offensive in the draft unless someone really falls to us. Right, and I, I think I don't think you guys will have a hard time winning that division as the Lions have kind of regressed yeah, losing they lost Sue. losing Sue and yeah. also losing Reggie Bush. And re They lost Reggie Bush, and, and uh, Calvin Johnson is amazing, and he is. He's got to be about 30 years old now. Right. Um, and I don't think the Vikings are going to be a contender. From the yet. way that the Bears look, they certainly the Bears are, are, a mess. are not a contender. The Bears are a fiasco. That was obvious the second they gave Jay Cutler that huge contract. I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know who they watched play quarterback for them the previous few years. Cutler's not that bad or anything, but he is not an elite quarterback that you give a huge contract to, and he is clearly not the mental leader of the team. So you blame Cutler more than the move to Mark Tressman, away from Lovey and to Mark Tressman. I don't know who's to blame there. It sounds like, to me, the front office is to blame. They're mm -hmm. making bad decisions. They're handing out contracts that are too much money for these guys, particularly Cutler, who seemed like the biggest problem. Um, I understand that it is really hard to find a competent or better quarterback in the NFL, but that doesn't mean you got a guy who's like a, a B or a B minus and you give him A, A plus money. Right. Uh, yeah, the Bears are a mess. We're not worried about them. The Vikings are solid and they're improving. I like uh, that they picked up Mike Wallace. I like the, um, what is it, Johnson is their other young receiver. And uh, I really like Teddy Bridgewater. I remember when they drafted Teddy Bridgewater, I thought, oh, crap. Teddy's probably the best quarterback in this in this draft, and he's fallen all the way to the Vikings. And I think they got a good linebacker on top of him too. So, but is a, is a sophomore quarterback really going to be able to he's compete? He's not going to win the division against right. Aaron Rodgers, no. Um, but it makes the division tougher. Uh, let's see. So you got Dallas in yours. I think Dallas should continue to be strong. I don't think the loss of Demarco Murray is the end of the world. They're going to lock up Dez. Um, who else you got? You got the Giants, who could we be have scary now. Are you worried about the Giants? Well, it's just ODB is one of the most special players I've ever seen. When was the last time you saw a guy? Hold on, we'll pause this little conversation. Yeah, we ha this and, is interesting here interesting because game. Taylor just flatted. And I don't understand that. With pocket jacks. Yeah. Now they are about 66 big blinds deep. Yeah. So maybe Taylor was thinking, well, you know, to the extent that Robbie has been playing very crazy, right. if he re-raises me. I wouldn't know what to do. And now he... Now, now he has to think, well, this is unfortunate. Robbie instantly checked back this flop. Robbie has been so aggressive. The question here is, is Taylor going to lead this turn, or is he going to go for a check raise? I would opt to check raise. I mean, once Robbie checks back that flop, I don't expect him to bet the four spades on the turn. I think I would just bet. That's a small bet. Robbie kind of an ambitious call by Ravi, but not terribly surprising. If he called that turn, he might call that river, because everything missed. Diamonds missed, spades missed, 7, 6, 8, 9, queen, 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 9. Yeah, I would be betting the river here if I were Taylor. Yeah. Pretty big bet. And so, Ravi will fold. Taylor will take it with his set.
Taylor completes the 5-3 of hearts on the small blind. Robbie in the big blind with pocket sevens is reaching for chips for a raise. And he does raise two and a half X to 150,000. Taylor will let that one go. So I'm I'm not I'm not too concerned with uh I th I think the Eagles have Giants? a good shot to lead. Yeah, I think they have a good shot to win the division. I'm I think you do. Of course, you got Chip Kelly for a coach. Uh, yeah, I think Dallas is is the the most competitive yeah. team of the remaining three in that division. Of course, Washington has is all kinds of problems. It is a mess. They're a nightmare. Uh, they're not going to be good for a long time. Um, yeah, you know, I'm not that worried about the Giants. I don't know what they've done with their defense during the offseason, but ODB is a transcendent player. And as I was saying before, when was the last time you could remember someone entering the NFL and suddenly becoming arguably the best player at their position, just rookie year? like, And, and just stats-wise, per game, by the end of the season, he was. Um, I don't think that you'd actually have... I don't think you can expect that for, yeah. for the next season, necessarily, but... I don't know, man. I've, I've just never seen somebody who burns corners that consistently and wow. catches balls, every single ball that comes near That's him. That's true. And they schemed towards him so much, and it became this, thing, this like, game where they would scheme towards him and in these incredibly obvious ways, and teams would try and stop him, and they just couldn't. That's true. And he would just have these crazy games every single week. That I just, I was one of the best catches I've, I've ever seen yeah, in my you know, life. Um, the only time I can remember something like that in the NFL was Randy Moss, right? He came along and he was he was immediately the best in his position. And right. I think maybe that was true of J.J. Watt. That might have been true of him in his rookie year. Certainly have an argument for J.J. Watt, yeah. Uh, but I can't remember a lot of guys in the NFL who just, okay, your rookie season and all of a sudden you're arguably the best at your position and at a very competitive position. Um, yeah, you know, but that said, he's one player. And he right. can't necessarily fix everything that was going wrong with the Giants. Especially as a wide receiver. Yeah. Taylor bets this flop. I would normally check back this morning. I agree. Yeah. But I think Taylor might have some type of read on Jesse that perhaps Jesse is, is trying to avoid playing big pots with, with Taylor and instead opting to play pots with Robbie. Of course, that's that's difficult to do when you when there are only three players at the table. But I'm thinking that that could be Taylor's Taylor's thought process, mm -hmm. especially behind barreling the the ten five of hearts uh, in a spot where he had no equity, and he did so correctly. like your Sixers are going to lock up the win here today. Well, Ravi passes on the button. One of the first times we've seen that. Yeah, I, I'm Kind of curious as to what hand that was. 8-5 offsuit. I think we've seen him raise that hand before. He folds the button there with 5 4. One 
Robbie raises about 2.6x here out of the big blind, and Taylor does fold. It's been a very interesting offseason, though. I feel like, and I could be wrong, the offseason usually doesn't have this much maneuvering in free agency. Am I mistaken? Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think a lot of, uh, I think that next year a lot of things will be different mm -hmm. than the previous season. More so than you see, you know, football is a sport where things tend to change quite a bit season to season. Yeah. I'm expecting even more of that coming into next year than, than, than normal. With the exception of maybe your division, I, I, I do think that it's going to be tough for the Packers to lose that division. Yeah, without Aaron Rodgers going down to an injury. Right. As long as he's healthy and playing like he does, you know, you're the favorite to win the division every year. You just, you, you know, if he's not the best player in football, certainly he's the best player at his position. Um, I know, obviously, some people would say Tom Brady, and I think Tom Brady, you could make the greatest quarterback of all time argument, but, I, you know, if I have one guy playing in a football game for me right now, I think I'd rather have Aaron Rodgers. And he's, you know, eight, nine years younger. What's remarkable about Aaron Rodgers is his touchdown to interception ratio. That's it's just absurd. And it's it's historic. Yeah. You know, nobody's come close. Taylor takes that one down with Ace Queen. But yeah, Brady obviously at this point an amazing career. Uh probably the best Super Bowl I've ever seen. Yeah, uh, an incredible yeah. game and uh, unbelievable all the Super Bowl. And, uh, hell, even the halftime show was great. Just like every <laughs> part of the Super Bowl was just great. Um, I had I had bet the Pats, and I didn't feel very strong either way. I was just like, eh, I guess the Pats. What are your thoughts on on the call to go for a pass on the goal line there, the last play of the game. I didn't think it was nearly as absurd as every, as the way everyone reacted to it, but I did think the decision of where to put that pass was not a great idea. I mean, if you okay, so you do have a little time to kill, and you're trying to make sure that, um, that Brady doesn't get the opportunity to go down the field. But why not throw a fade to the corner? Why not uh, throw an out route where the guy's falling out of bounds and tries to make the, you know, drag his feet type catch? Why throw something over the middle where just a tip could pop the ball into the air and, and end the game like that? Uh, right. So something interesting here is that Robbie folded eight the exact same hand on his button last time around, and this time he elects to open. Jesse with King Jack here on his button. Mm, not a fan of this one. You've got a good hand. Let's just raise it up. I agree. And I, I do think that's why I'm inclined to believe that his Queen 7 limp was probably a strategic play. It's just an adjustment he's making. The thing that I think he might be thinking is, you know what, I don't need to raise preflop. If I flop a strong hand against Robbie, I probably will be able to get a large percentage of my stack in either way, based on the way that Robbie's playing. Yeah, but Robbie doesn't like folding his big blind anyway. Right. Let's just raise our good hands. Right. The other thing is I really don't like letting Taylor in into the mix either. Mm -hmm. What Taylor is going, what is happening here? here? Just an air ball. And Robbie has bottom pair and Jesse top pair of course I, what is Taylor doing I 
maybe I, the only thing I can think is that Taylor misread his hand. I, I don't know. I don't know why he's betting eighty thousand with with Jack six here. I. Now, if you're Jesse, I, I imagine you're going to raise in this spot. And he does elect to raise. That's a pretty large raise from Jesse, actually. Jesse takes it down. I'm trying to think who else is at a really interesting offseason. Obviously, the 49ers, you talked about them before, but Willis is retired. Uh, Chris Borland retired. Uh, the quarterback, um, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, what's the 49ers quarterback? This is easy. Oh, um, Kaepernick. Kaepernick. He's on the trading block. Uh, Frank Gore is gone, although you got Carlos Hyde behind him, which is a better option. Uh, Crabtree is going to be gone. Um, it sounds like Justin Smith, the defensive end, is going to retire as well. It's been just, and they've lost obviously a great coach in John Harbaugh. Um, even if he always looks like a kid who crapped his pants on the sideline, um, <laughs> it's just been an abysmal off season for them. It's going to be a, it's going to be a tough year, and they be a have a tough few years for them. They have perhaps the toughest division in football as well. Yeah. Uh, the Rams are going to be better. Um, the Seahawks, of course, are, are very competitive. The Cardinals will regress a little bit, but they still have a fantastic defense. So Taylor raises the King-10 of clubs on the button, and Ravi flats in the small blind with King-Queen. And Jesse will come along in the big blind with 8-4 offsuit. I probably would have folded the 8-4 offsuit in the big blind here. Yes, I would as well. well nobody really finds anything on a 6 deuce. Taylor Seabet's about half pot. And a raise here from Rozzy with King Queen High. Well, he's not repping very much, but it should work. Do you think? Do you think that part of Robbie's thinking is I have the backdoor nut flush draw? Ah, uh, maybe. He makes his flop check raise pretty small as he normally does. Taylor, holding on to his king-10, hasn't folded yet, perhaps thinking, what exactly is, is Ravi repping in this spot? Exactly l w what you were saying. not really believing this, and rightly so, but... Looks <laughs> like he's 
going to give it up. He yeah, doesn't want to give up King High. You know you're making an implausible bluff when your opponent really doesn't want to fold King High to you. Taylor was very disappointed about folding that King 10. Taylor and Robbie with a little bit of a rapport here. I guess it's easy to have a rapport when you make back-to-back -back WPT final tables with the same person. Yeah. At the Bay 101 shooting star, Robbie placed sixth. Taylor took first in that event. Here, Taylor looking to go back to back to be the champion of back to back WPT final tables. And Robbie salivating for that WPT win that he missed last time around. Taylor defending 4 5 suited in the big blind, and Robbie has him dominated with the 5 6 offsuit. <laughs> Both players hit a pair. Turn King is going to give Taylor a flush draw to go along with his pair. Check. 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 Deuce of hearts on the river. Robbie with the best hand here. Picks up another pot. Still solidly in first place. Jesse raises the queen eight offsuit on the button. Taylor calls a small blind with a mystery hand. There it is. Taylor. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Jesse had limped. Seen a so bunch of those. Je yeah, Jesse back to his limping strategy on the button. Taylor completes a small blind, and now it's up to Ravi with the big 10 4 in the big blind. He's reaching for raisin chips. Huh. Made a 275, and this should work for him. <coughs> Tony, this has been a very interesting final table. Hasn't there have it? been crazy hands at this final table so far, and I expect it to continue as long as as long as Ravi is is going to continue to play. Uh, in such an unorthodox fashion, and it really seems like Taylor is is adjusting to that. The thing, the the real hands that come up come to mind are Robbie's Ace Five, where he got it all in, drawing dead against Jesse, um, who who turned a straight. Also, of course, the hand where Robbie had pocket queens and he made a, a fantastic call yeah, the big one against, against Harrison. Harrison. 
Taylor, of course, calling down three streets with Ace Deuce against Robbie. That was a big hand. Here's Taylor under the gun with Ace Queen, or I'm sorry, on the button, which is the same as under the gun three handed with Ace Queen offsuit. Jesse, likely to just peel here. Neither player finds much on 10 5 deuce. Tyler Flyers out here small, about a third pot, and it's enough to win. Interesting bet sizing by Taylor. I, I probably would have bet bigger. But it is good enough to take down the pot. This final table has been three-handed for quite some time. Yeah. It's and it's starting to look pretty good for your side of this bet, Tony. Yeah, I, I think I set a dumb line there. Set a very fishy line, but how much longer do we have until you you are the victor of this bet? What was the what time did we set? I think eight thirty-eight. Uh, so about two hours. Two hours and five minutes. If the final table is still going on in two hours and five minutes, then you have twenty cane dollars. Here, Ravi folds the 4-5 on the button. Wouldn't have expected that. Jesse in the small blind with 8-9 of spades. I'm anticipating he will just call, as has been the case. And that's what he does. Now on Tapar in the big blind with 5-6 off. Jesse definitely not folding this time. It's a gut shot with the backdoor draw. But Players check. Turn, card is a turn is a four of spades, so interesting now everybody turn picks out outs. Very interesting turn card. And the question is if you're Jesse here, there's 360,000 in the pot, you have 2.2 million. Are you going for a check raise or are you going to lead? I'm inclined to say I would just bet twice because you'll get ace high to fold. And uh, even though Taylor's checking back, he usually reps a pair. I don't think there's too many kings he checks back here, so. I would probably just bet with the intention of betting twice, and I don't know, we have a ton of outs. I would I would be going for a check raise here. Yeah. And the reason why is I, I do expect uh, Taylor to check back a decent amount of jacks, hands like, you know, pocket eights, although on those he might check again on the turn. Um, and But I do expect his ace highs to fold simply to a river bet, oftentimes.
Also, Jesse has been pretty snug at this final table, so I do think that a check raise would get credit. It's mm -hmm. a bet and call. A four on the river. Four, and this is really interesting because yeah. it doesn't improve either player's hands. Jesse has the best hand with nine high. Yeah. Um, of course, he can't know that. And if he checks, he's going to check fold. Exactly, and that's what exactly what I think and is it's going to happen. Such a bad card from the try and bluff at. So. He very well might give up here. I mean, we wouldn't really blame him for it, but he's. It's also one of those spots where he's close to the bottom of his range, right? He's got um, one of the worst hands in his range. Yeah. He's reaching for chips. And making it a value sized raise, about half pot, a little over half pot. No, right around half pot. Just, yeah, a little bit less than half yeah. pot. Taylor is not one to instantly f act on the river. To instantly fold, he always weighs his options, always considers a, a raise. Seems like this is a spot where a raise would not be very credible. But it would work. But he'll just pass. Jesse Rockowitz takes that one down. Shout out to the Royal Flush Girl Social Bar, sponsored by Monster. And, of course, the WPT Champions Cup right behind Tuba, next to Matt Savage, our tournament director. Jesse on the button with the 8-6 offsuit. Imagine he'll fold here. Call. And the Taylor who limps the A7. And all of this limping, Tony, is, is going to make it a lot more difficult for me to win this $20. Yeah. Increasingly like my side. Two pair for Taylor here. But hard to get action from Ravi on this board. Ravi is going to stab big with just 10 high. Now, if I were Taylor here, I would certainly be going for a raise. And Taylor just calls. So maybe he knows something I don't, because his opponent does have 10 high, and it's likely he was folding to a check race. The three here could get Ravi to bet again. He picks up a draw to the four. Both players check. Queen on the river. Queen. Taylor goes for two fifteen. It's 
about a half pot bet. All this river tanking will also to contribute to you winning the bet if in fact that does happen. Although it's like Ravi is, is carving out chips here. I can't imagine that he is contemplating a call with Ten High. And he makes the what? call with Ten High. Hmm. Whoa. Did he put him on 8 6 or He eight, six, must four, have eight. put him on either 8 6 or 8 9. That is a crazy call. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Maybe his, his favorite player is Tuungar. He confidently tells Taylor that he had 10 high. <laughs> so. Interesting call oh there by Robbie. Robbie still the chip leader the with 4.6 million chips. I, Tony, I would have, I would have given you 20 to one that he wasn't going to call there with 10 high. <laughs> People on Twitch are going crazy. <laughs> As well, they should be. Not the best call I've ever seen in my life. And uh, you know what? Taylor shows that he, he, you know, he knows what's going on by just calling that flop instead of check raising. I certainly would have check raised the flop. But Tyler ended up doing pretty well by calling there and then somehow getting his opponent to pay him off on the river with 10 high. Here he has ace 5 offsuit and he raises to 120,000. Robbie's in the small blind with ace 6 suited. We'll see if he elects to just call or if he goes for a 3 bet here. And we have not seen much small blind three betting out of Ravi today. No, we haven't. And we haven't seen much folding out of the big blind from Jesse Rockowicz, and he has the jack three offsuit. And he does call. I would have folded the, the jack three in the in the big blind, wouldn't you have, Tony? Yeah. I don't fold a lot of hands here, but that's one of them that gets folded. Well ten ten four doesn't connect with any of our three players. I'm thinking that Jesse's logic just has to be, you know what, Ravi is splashing around so much. If I make trips, then I very well could get paid. And he could especially have that feeling after, you know, turning the straight against him and getting Ravi to go all in with the ace five bottom pair. However, when you only have 35 big blinds, or I'm sorry, in this case, 45 big blinds, you know, each additional big blind you're putting into a pod, they do add up. Taylor will follow through. Ravi making a very interesting call here with a six. Not doing a lot of folding lately. No. That's for sure. Jack doesn't change anything on the turn. Players will check the jack and a nine on the river. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those funny hands that goes check, check, and then they just chop it up. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I wouldn't be too surprised if Robbie bets here. He does check. Taylor checks. Both players do check, so let's chop this one up. Eight, six of clubs, 
pieces of diamond five parts. Do you have a foot pot? Jab it out. This has been a very loose, aggressive final table. It's been a very strange final table. Very, very, very strange. Very strange. Now we're we're starting to have a little more of a of a difference in the, in the chip counts here as Jesse Rockowitz has trended downwards. He now has forty three big blinds. Of course, as you pointed out earlier, this pay jump here from third to second is actually considerable. It's about a sixty three thousand dollar pay jump, yep. and then the jump going from second to first is ninety two thousand or ninety three thousand. The wave is starting in the audience here. And Robbie with the king queen offsuit on his button. Raising it up. <laughs> Jesse going to let go of five deuce in the small. Over to Taylor. He's got a jack three. He'll drop it. When he's not playing poker, Ravi likes to play chess. Also is a big cricket fan and has played some cricket in his day. He was born in India and he now lives in Dublin, California, which is about an hour south of the casino here. Jesse drills this flop, pair in a flush draw. Taylor with second pair and Ravi with nothing. Eighty. Fold, Ravi. You don't have anything. We've been through this already. No! Why are you touching chips? I just don't understand. Well, he does have two backdoor straight draws and a backdoor flush draw. Oh, it's on Jesse, and I, I think he's just thinking about what size he wants to raise to here. Raise, 325. He's going to 325. Pretty sure that's just going to win the pot. <laughs> I wouldn't be too sure, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. What do I know? I mean, Ravi has woken up with the jack high. Someone on Twitch said, Ravi, the king of the... YOLO, YOLO call, and that's essentially it. Like, yeah. you know, it's just, all right, man. Now it's it's back on Robbie. Yet. Let's see what happens here. It's 245,000 to call. If any other player in the world were sitting in Robbie's seat right now, I would be pretty confident as to as to what the play would be. I, However, are the graphics misrepresenting his hand? I just don't understand. Robbie does have the jack high. <coughs> Okay, and he'll, there we go. He lays it down. So a nice little pot for Jesse Rockowitz. As the stacks are trending back to parity.
Another shot of the Royal Flush Girl Social Bar, sponsored by Monster. Gotta think it's getting pretty cold in there, especially in Must those be. dresses. Must be. Action on Taylor on the button with a six offsuit. Min raises. Ravi has a finds a disciplined fold there in the small blind. The seven deuce offsuit. Jesse's in the big blind with Queen Jack, and he will call. Nobody really connects. It's ten five four, two hearts and a diamond. Not a bad flop for Taylor with the ace high heart and uh, backdoor straight draw. Jesse will likely just check fold. And that he does. guys have been here for a while. You can see him stretching out. <laughs> Robbie has been asking for quite a while when, when the break is. He can tell he's starting to get restless with his Jack 3 calls on ace king five boards and here he is with four five offsuit it's a hand we saw him fold earlier on the button and now he's raising we have also seen him both fold and raise eight five offsuit so it seems like he, he's raising more based on the way that he's feeling rather than based on the cards that he's yeah. holding it's tough to suppress the way you're feeling after seven hours on the table taylor defends the King Deuce of Clubs out of the big blind, and he drills it. Both these guys really connect on the flop. This could be an interesting hand. Now, last time Taylor had two pair against Ravi, he elected to simply check call. It was in a different spot. It was in a spot where he completed the small blind. Yeah, I think we're seeing a check raise this time. Especially, I hope so. You know, Ravi just kind of followed through quickly and thoughtlessly, like, yep, yep, but. You know, it was one of those kind of automatic things, which makes me think Taylor will pick up on it and say, all right, well, you like what you have? Oh. Nope, I'm wrong. Absolutely not. And it seems like Taylor has really taken a strategy where he's just going to play his strong hand slowly against Robbie. I'm not sure if I like that strategy. Yeah, I mean, As we saw Robbie Jesse put blast. in a three bet on the turn with the nut, or with, with the third nut straight, and Robbie just go all in with ace five bottom pair. So now Taylor has not checked yet on this turn. And he is carving out chips. Taylor bet's very small. 185,000. I don't mind the lead. I would have preferred a larger lead. I wonder how Ravi's going to react to this. Call you know, just call? Pretty quickly calls, so. And a uh, jack of spades on the river will whiff for Ravi, so he's got the nut low. However, it is an interesting river card. Mm -hmm. Ravi could think he, he can very easily rep spades 
with the way he played the hand, and he, he certainly can. In addition, it's possible that Ravi could have played a hand like ace-queen this way. Um, so I would say that that jack of spades river is better for Ravi's range than it is for Taylor's. Yeah, definitely. No five high call. <laughs> Looks like these guys are on break, if I'm not seeing this incorrectly. So we'll be back in 15 minutes. See you guys then.